Good morning. Uh, we have with us Sailesh Dhuri, the CEO of Decimal Analytics. Uh, hi, how are you doing? I am doing good. How are you doing today morning? I am doing great. Uh, so before we get into the uh, get into your startup, get into your company, uh, I would like like to ask you about your educational background and the journey, your entrepreneurial journey. My education background is uh, actually I have six degrees, but the most prominent is that I have done MBA from IIM Bangalore, and I I have done CFA, uh, cost accounting and ERM, FRM. And as well as so the basic qualification is BCom, so that is uh, my uh, qualification. And all these degrees I got uh, about three decades ago. Uh, most of these degrees. Uh, and uh, in terms of the company, Decimal Point Analytics is now about two decades old company. And uh, before Decimal Analytics, how was your journey? What were you doing? Yes, so so very interesting start to my career. Uh, uh, I started uh, my career immediately after India's liberalization. So uh, got to work on very interesting uh, assignments and projects. Like uh, uh, I was part of the team that started uh, one of the first private sector banks in India, UTI Bank, now called Axis Bank. I was also part of uh, a team which started uh, India's first uh, liquid fund that is uti money market fund there was no liquid fund industry before that uh, i was also part and, and it, that was a big achievement uh, in pre-internet days ensuring that the money uh, sent anywhere in the in, in india is received in mumbai within two hours was a big technology challenge you wouldn't call that uh, that time fintech that that was the first uh, of my fintech ventures that time to ensure that uh, uh, apply technology of that time to ensure money reaches Mumbai in two hours. Now it doesn't seem to be a big problem. It was a big problem that time. And then I, I got to work with uh, the first uh, primary dealership company in India in private sector. Uh, and then I worked with a foreign bank uh, in Mumbai. And uh, at that time, the entrepreneurial bug really hit me. And uh, I, on a, uh, some whim i thought i will leave my job and start something on my own and uh, the, but there, there was some thought behind it i had been thinking about you know the opportunities in india as the internet came and uh, uh, from 98 99 i was thinking that uh, the analytics and the research space in india is ripe for outsourcing and i wanted to build something there but there were no benchmarks available that time India only had IT outsourcing industry and maybe some wise outsourcing was coming, but high-end outsourcing was not there still part of India's uh, landscape. But I decided to take the plunge and build a company. And uh, that was in year 2003, I started the journey into entrepreneurship. And uh, let me come to the next question then. Um... How did you think about decimal analytics? What was your inspiration? How did you come up with the idea? So, so very interesting. So, uh, in India, internet came, uh, I think, on 16th January 1998. And uh, we were one of the first users of internet in India. And when I saw internet, my eyes really opened up. Before internet, getting information was a big problem. Uh, but after, when I saw that everything that you want, hmm, whether you want a company financials, at that time US company financials were available on their internet, or whether you want to know, uh, see uh, uh, CEO interviews, they're all available on internet. Uh, and if you want to look up old newspaper reports, they are available in internet at click of button. I don't have to go to library. Uh, and uh, any part of the world you can research sitting in your uh, chair. That was a revelation for me. And then I started thinking that what it means for the young youth of India. And I was a young person that time. Uh, so, and I thought uh, it will open opportunities in analytics space, in research space. And uh, it took few years to finalize those ideas into a business venture, about four to five years. And then I jumped into this business. Right. So before jumping into the business, you obviously have 
had a lot of research about the industry. So how mature do you think is the Indian market in comparison to the international market? So uh, when I started out, even the international market was not very mature. And uh, as of now, Indian market is uh, mostly at a nascent stage. There are very good companies who are doing good work, but they are far and few between. Uh, mostly, if, if I have to, uh, uh, let us say, if, if I rank the US market on scale of 10, 9, then India would be at about 2 or 3 at this stage in terms of applying data analytics to solving business problems. Although the cost of technology is far lower in India, like the bandwidth cost is lower, data storage cost is lower, power cost is lower, salary cost is lower, but uh, the implementations have not yet happened at the scale that are happening in other parts of the world. And uh, can you give us a more detailed um, picture of the Indian industry uh, and the market dynamics? In India, uh, the uh, most of the growth in analytics is actually driven by government. If you see the initiative on Aadhaar, mm -hmm. in initiative of having bank accounts linked, the initiative of UPI payments, uh, now having health ID, the digital health records, all these are getting pushed down from government in terms of ensuring that uh, the cost of delivery is low for government services and uh, the benefits are targeted to the particular people. And then the business is joining on their bandwagon slowly but surely. Uh, it will take some time and India is, I think, one of the few countries where government is ahead in terms of innovation than private sector, in, especially in data space. And which is a very uh, unique situation. Uh, six years ago, I didn't thought that that will be a situation, but right now that is the situation uh, for, for India. And really proud to have this kind of uh, government. But private sector needs to catch up very soon. And what do you think are the driving factors of this industry in India? So driving factor is, the, the biggest driving factor is that uh, India is a cost conscious country and data analytics helps lower the cost of any delivery, whether it's food delivery or whether it's medicine, medicinal devices or financial services. So that is the first factor. Second is differentiators. Uh, people can differentiate their services uh, using data analytics and create moats around their own businesses using data analytics. They can create walled gardens. Uh, we haven't seen that happening too much in India. Uh, we have we are seeing that happening in other parts of the world, but maybe in India also it will happen in about five to ten years time. So we are talking about the industry and the market. Um, what do you think? the companies need to enhance in order to you know uh, make data analytics process successful or data analytics program successful the first thing that they need to understand is that they are sitting with a huge host of information inside their organization uh, and and a lot of data is getting generated inside the organization but it is currently scattered and in various formats which are not compatible with, with each other so that is the first opportunity that they, they can explore. And they need to use various tools, uh, whether internally or with the external vendors to extract value from the internal data. And after that, uh, they can then marry their internal data with the external data, which is available a plenty uh, in India uh, because of GST, because of uh, so many other uh, initiatives that government has. And then create unique uh, solutions for the customers. So I think we have to cross a huge amount of uh, uh, mindset barrier for various departments within various companies to open up to each other for sharing of data in many of the legacy companies. Some companies are doing it well, uh, but not all companies are doing that yet to the fullest possible extent. Right. So uh, the market has gone a lot of changes, gone through a lot of changes, right? In the past couple of years and up even like because of COVID as well and demonetization as well. 
So what are the changes that happened in the industry in the past couple of years and what are the new trends that can be seen? For the, see, the trend to data analytics, trend to digitization, trend, trend to uh, uh, having everything uh, online was anyway happening. But what COVID did and what demandization did was that they gave two uh, uh, shocks to the system to push push in the direction that anyway system was moving. So had uh, COVID not happened and had uh, demandation not happened, where we are today in, at the end of 2022, would have taken maybe 2026 or 2027. So we have pulled the future uh, backward. We, we, have, we have pulled the future to today to to large extent because of these two shocks. And the demandation shock was unique to India while uh, COVID shock uh, was across the world. But the way uh, India reacted, and especially the government reacted to the COVID shock by double, doubling down on, on digitization was uh, an experiment by itself. And that has really helped the industry propel forward. And the reason we are seeing our GDP growth quite high, inflation as compared to other countries quite low, uh, so US is having nearly 8%, India below 7%. We have never seen this kind of thing that Indian inflation is lower than US or German inflation. First time we are seeing this because of this push towards digitization, even during uh, COVID time. You know, focusing our attention to COVID, COVID has had a immense effect on, the, in, on many industries. Yes. Uh, you know, businesses got shut down. Uh, economy, uh, economic effect happened, and also our personal, political, economic, social, every sphere. So, how did it affect Decibel? So, uh, unfortunately, we lost uh, one of our uh, employee and one of uh, another employee lost uh, 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 their spouse. So, that loss is irrecoverable loss. Hmm? Uh, but uh, uh, if you uh, after that human loss, in terms of business, in terms of uh, growth, uh, company has benefited quite a bit. Uh, our growth rates went up, client acceptance of our offerings went up, uh, and uh, the team, the way the team reacted to COVID, was very very different than uh, uh, most other companies. In fact, we didn't have any a single minute of downtime when we went into lockdown uh, because we went we decided to shut our offices one week before others, and then people were able to manage that whatever they wanted to buy for their house their house. Even a power cord is was a problem once the lockdown started, but our people were able to buy all those things beforehand, and we didn't have a single minute of downtime, so which helped us quite a bit. But what pains me even today is the loss of livelihood lives that we saw in our company and li livelihood loss across the organizations, across various parts of uh, ecosystem that uh, we were part of. So um, now coming back to your company, uh, let's, let's talk about it more. What are the um, services that you are providing? And... How does it set you apart from the other companies in the industry? So, uh, very interesting question. Uh, we, we are always at the forefront of innovation for our customers. Our customers are mid-sized companies across the world. And they don't get access to innovation early at a reasonable cost. That is what we are able to provide to them. And, uh, that, and that is what is our USP and that is what keeps our growth going. So our services in data analytics, uh, data curation, uh, in uh, ETL services are widely recognized across the industry and, and people uh, stand by the quality that decimal point analytics gives out uh, and also timeline. And we are very proud of that and our clients are in fact proud of uh, that as well uh, overall. Uh, having said that, uh, in future, we, we are planning to have various other services that are complementary to this. And those announcements uh, maybe uh, will come in about in months or two months time, where we are launching new products uh, and new initiatives, uh, which uh, are, uh, let's say, 
based on our uh, experience in last two decades but uh, can propel the industry growth and hence our growth faster and a successful business a successful company is incomplete without a team so yes. can you please talk about your team and team members yes so uh, uh, i would give shout out to my co-founders so although in 2003 i started out uh, solo very soon many of my co-founders joined uh, from 2004 onwards and those uh, have been with uh, me in all the ups and downs of the business uh, for last two decades and uh, their hard work their guidance and their collective mind has helped and uh, apart from that uh, now we have a strong uh, senior leader, leadership below the co-founders who have been with the company now for more than a decade many of our senior leadership have spent more than a decade with the company and you will find very surprising that in in this uh, era when people change job every two or three years there's so many people who have decided to stay with us for such a long period of time and that talks about the culture that uh, we as a team have been able to build a culture of high performance but still a family like uh, culture that we have we stand by each other we take care of each other we push each other, each other to to do better and that is what people like in the company and that is the uh, value that all the co-founders have brought together uh, our one of the uh, idea was that this should be learning organization so uh, we put a lot of emphasis on learning and our teams are always uh, pushed towards learning more and more skills and more or more knowledge and that also helps retain our, us retain our talent that is great to hear um so what are your future plans do you have obviously you have plans of expansion pan india or international so what are your expansion plans and what are your future goals for the company yes so uh, currently as we started out in our office in mumbai uh, then we opened office in nasik recently about a year six months ago we opened office in uh, gift city and maybe in india we'll open offices in two or three other cities in next one or two years. So, which could be uh, either Indore or Nagpur. Uh, and we'll keep on expanding across India. In terms of geography, uh, international geographies, we are we have physical presence in uh, uh, UK, in uh, US, in Canada. And pretty soon we might have uh, additional presence in Australia, uh, Middle East uh, and South Africa as well. So the other medium term plans in terms of international expansions. And what are your future aims and goals for the company? So uh, I want this company to become employer of choice for the youth of the of the nation. We are achieving a small success in the mid town, uh, mid sized towns that we operate, but we want to achieve that across the country. So uh, India, uh, let's say about 22, 20 years ago, produced about two and a half crore kids in a year. Now we need to provide those two and a half crore kids are now 20 years old. We have to provide all of them a good quality job. Right. And, and if a decimal point keeps on growing, then we will be doing our own contribution, a small contribution in creating and jobs uh, for the country. And high quality uh, jobs which are satisfactory, satisfying the youth's uh, growth ambition. That is my dream. Great. And um, so uh, what are your like investment status right now and what are your future investment plans? Yes. So uh, we are a cash positive company. We are a cash surplus company. We have been profitable for nearly 13, 14 years now. Uh, most of the years we have been uh, reasonably profitable. Uh, and we, we make uh, investments from our profits to ensure that we are able to uh, grow rapidly. So some of the products that we are developing uh, 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 will be announcing those products in a month or two uh, time, uh, which would be focusing on having cloud-based services and also our entry into uh, Web3 uh, services, Web3.0 services. We had stayed away from crypto for so long. Uh, we were watching that space. But I think now that 
this that system has gone through three crises in last uh, seven years. The system is mature enough to handle real innovation, and hence we would be entering that space uh, with Web 3.0 offerings. And um, coming to the customer uh, experience, how has the customer experience been for you? And you as a service provider, what do you, what are the challenges that you face? Customer experience has been reasonably good for us, uh, especially uh, during the pandemic period, the customer experience has been fantastic. Uh, however, customers also keep on asking for more and more. And that is always a uh, evolving challenge for us and we are up to it. So uh, customers uh, are now, uh, so I, I would say that uh, let's say two decades ago, when we started out, the customer's expectation was, we will give a job to you and you do the job. Don't ask any questions, follow the rules. Now the customers are saying design systems for us, be a part of our innovation ecosystem, In, uh, innovate for us. Okay, so that is a big change uh, for, for in about two decades time that uh, companies like us are, are seen as innovation partners for our customers. And that is a big change in expectation. And I think we will be leading that part. And the problems that you face, how do you solve them? What, your, what is your solution uh, approach and how is that unique? So uh, first of all, you need to be proactive. And other thing is you need to always be thinking about others. So I have this philosophy of uh, Jai versus Vijay. So there are two words in, uh, let's say, Sanskrit language and in Hindi language. Jai, Vijay, you think both same meaning the same. It means victory. But they actually mean different things. In Jai, it means that uh, in my victory lies your victory. Or in fact, in your victory lies my victory. And Vijay means in your defeat lies my victory. So I try to uh, put all situations where, while problem solving, can I uh, change a situation where we have a Jai solution where all parties win and not a Vijay solution where one party loses and other party wins. And that is my fundamental approach to problem solving. That is an amazing approach, a very positive approach. Um, we are at the end of the interview and I, the last question I'd like to ask you is to give some advice to the budding entrepreneurs or who is who is wanting to you know begin a startup. What okay. will be your advice to them? First, first of all, don't go after this valuation game. Go after your customers. Your customers are happy, your business will be there. A valuation game, uh, you can play for six months, nine months, two years there will be always a cycle of ups and downs in valuation game. Be cash flow positive. Uh, or if, if you are in a capital heavy industry, have sufficient capital buffer in your hand so that you can see any downturns that are coming to your way. Customer is the king. Investor is not the king. Okay, so keep that in mind. I think many entrepreneurs uh, have forgotten who is the primary audience for the business. Uh, they are setting up business models that investors want to see or then customers want to see. That is a great advice and it was so nice talking to you. It was so encouraging talking yes. to you. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you for interviewing thank you. us. Thank you very much. Thank you.